After raid on Aqsa Mosque, rockets from Gaza and Israeli airstrikes. Gaza officials say 20 people were killed in the airstrikes. The escalation followed clashes between the Israeli police and Palestinian protesters at Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. Every time you read an article about any place, always look where it is so that you have an idea of what's going on. Because sometimes just knowing the geography of certain areas can kind of clue you in to certain types of conflicts, right? Tel Aviv is here. Um... Gaza Strip is here. Um, West Bank is here. We'll just read this on this, okay? The Gaza Strip, or simply Gaza, is a self-governing Palestinian territory on the eastern coast of the Mediterranean Sea that borders Egypt on the southwest for 11 kilometers and Israel on the east and north along a 51-kilometer border. Gaza and the West Bank are claimed by the de jure sovereign state of Palestine. The territories of Gaza and the West Bank are separated from each other by Israeli territory. Both fell under the jurisdiction of the Palestinian Authority, but the Strip has since, has, since the Battle of Gaza in June 2007 been governed by Hamas a Palestinian fundamentalist militant Islamic organization which came to power in the last total elections in 2006. It has been placed under an Israeli and U.S.-led international economic and political boycott from that time onwards. If none of, what is the, um, what were people freaking out about, about, is, about Israelis coming in and like buying property and building houses? Was that not in the Gaza Strip or West Bank or where was this? I remember reading articles about this a long time ago, but I don't. Was it the West Bank settlements? Okay. Gaza is under a blockade by Israel. The West Bank is where all the summer drum is. Okay, cool. Weeks of simmering tensions in Jerusalem between Palestinian protesters, the police, and right-wing Israeli Israelis suddenly veered into military conflict on Monday as a local skirmish and the decades-long battle for control of the city escalated into rocket fire and airstrikes in Gaza. After a raid by the Israeli police on the Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem left hundreds of Palestinians and a score of police officers wounded, militants in Gaza responded by firing a barrage of rockets at Jerusalem, drawing Israeli airstrikes in return. The catalyst for the escalation was the conflict over recent Israeli efforts to remove Palestinians from st strategic parts of the city. The issue became a rallying cry for Palestinians who saw the moves as ethnic cleansing and illegal, and right-wing Israeli Jews who said they were fighting for their property as landowners, while also attempting to ensure Jewish control over East Jerusalem. The dispute, focused on a single Jerusalem neighborhood, has exploded into a major flip in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, gaining world attention after a period in which the Palestinian cause has been largely marginalized by the United States under President Donald J. Trump, by the Arab countries that normalized relations with Israel, and by Israel ruled by a right-wing government for more than a decade. By the end of the day, Monday, Hamas, the Islamist militant group that controls Gaza, had fired rockets at Jerusalem for the first time in seven years. Israeli airstrikes left at least 20 Palestinians, including nine children, dead, according to Palestinian officials, and the region was bracing for a cycle of reprisal attacks. For weeks, Palestinians had been protesting the planned eviction of Palestinian families from the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood of East Jerusalem, leading to clashes with Israeli police and far-right-wing activists. There were also clashes between Palestinian protesters and the police elsewhere in the city, as well as a spate of assaults by Jewish and Arab street mods during the Holy Muslim month of Ramadan, when tensions often run high. The violence on Monday began after the police entered the mosque compound around 8 a.m. and fired rubber-tipped bullets and stun grenades at stone-throwing Palestinians. The, Isra the Israeli government said the police had been responding after the Palestinians started throwing stones at them. The Palestinians had stockpiled stones at the site in expectation of a standoff with the police and Jewish far-right groups. Palestinian witnesses said the fighting began after the police entered the mosque compound and began firing. By the afternoon, more than 330 Palestinians had been injured, with at least 250 hospitalized, according to the Palestinian Red Crescent. One person was hit in the head by a bullet and was in critical condition, the medical aid group said, with at least two more in serious or critical condition. At least 21 police officers were injured, according to the police. Hamas has been threatening for weeks to respond with force to what it described as Israeli provocations in Jerusalem. Tampering with Jerusalem will burn the heads of the occupiers. Saleh al Arori, Arori? Uh, a senior Hamas official, said on Sunday night. On Monday, angered by the raid on Al-Aqsa, Hamas and its allies in Gaza sought to make good on that promise. Hamas militants fired at least 150 rockets across southern and central Israel, the Israeli army said, with at least one landing in a village in the hills west of Jerusalem, causing damage to houses but no casualties. The volley of half a dozen rockets that reached the Jerusalem area were the first to be fired toward the city since 2014, an army spokesman said. Israeli returned fire with airstrikes. 
Israel will respond with great force. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu warned in a statement, we will not tolerate attacks on our territory, on our capital, on our citizens, and on our soldiers. Whoever attacks us will pay a heavy price. The Israeli military said in a statement that an Israeli airstrike had killed eight Hamas operatives and struck two military sites in a tunnel used by militants. Separately, the Islamic Jihad militant group fired an anti-tank missile from the Gaza perimeter toward an Israeli vehicle, wounding the driver. An unusually high number of Palestinian citizens of Israel protested in solidarity with Gaza following the airstrikes, with many photographed waving Palestinian flags. The Palestinian demonstrations of the planned expulsions in Sheikh Jarrah came after years of frustration over Israeli restrictions on building permits in East Jerusalem, which have forced Palestinian residents to leave the city or to build illegal housing and risk demolition. There have also been recent clashes over restrictions on Palestinian access to a popular plaza at the center of Palestinian communal life. The unrest was long predicted to come to a boil on Monday when far-right Israelis were scheduled to march through the Muslim quarter of the old city. The March on Jerusalem Day, an annual event to mark the capture of East Jerusalem during the Arab-Israeli War in 1967, is seen by Palestinians as provocation. Palestinians claim East Jerusalem is the capital of a future state. Israel annexed it after 1967, a claim most of the world does not recognize. Despite international calls to tamp down the crisis, the, hold on, does U.S. recognize East Jerusalem belong Israel? I'm actually curious about that. I wonder if the U.S. recognizes it. I feel like that's probably the important one. It says it's internationally condemned. Does the U.S. have like a position on this? Didn't Trump recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital? Yeah, but I'm curious about the East Israel thing. What was the capital before? Was it Tel Aviv in, in Israel before the Trump thing? Or was that just where like the government is stationed or whatever? 86 countries have embassies in Tel Aviv. Zero countries have embassies in Jerusalem. In 1989, Israel began leasing to the U.S. a plot of land in Jerusalem for a new embassy. The 99-year lease cost $1 per year. To this day, the plot has not been developed and it remains an empty field. In 1995... The U.S. Congress passed a law requiring America to move the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. Proponents said the U.S. should respect Israel's choice of Jerusalem as its capital and recognize it as such. Every president since 1995, President Clinton, Bush, and Obama, has declined to move the embassy, citing national security interests. Every six months, the president has used the presidential waiver to circumvent the embassy move. And then Trump, I guess, wanted to follow through with it. Did, um, has Biden said anything about the recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, or has that? He moved the embassy, or he ordered the embassy to move there. Does U.S. have embassy in Jerusalem? Destiny, why do they not want to move it? So I'm going to be speculating a lot here, okay? But I think most of this is probably fairly common sense, right? So there's a battle over who has a right to exist in Jerusalem with a large number of Palestinians living, especially in Eastern Jerusalem and a large number of Israeli people living in like Western and Central Jerusalem, right? So the idea is, is that both sides desperately have or want to have like a claim to this land. So if Israel is, or if Israeli people like really want Jerusalem, what Israelis want is Israeli people want, hey, can you guys please recognize this place as our capital? Please, 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 please. It gives us a ton of validation in terms of owning the city. And if the world recognizes it as our capital, we have like way more say to kind of like kick all these losers in the East kind of like out of this place because it's our capital for them, right? But I'm guessing is that like the rest of the world is like, well, you're, we're, our embassies are in Tel Aviv. Let's just go ahead and leave things here for now because if you guys move into uh, Jerusalem and you start trying to recognize shit, it gives you more credence to kick the Palestinians out and shit is going to like ramp up hardcore. Like it, it's probably like that. This is kind of how people will like fight over um, like territory, right? As you slowly start to occupy more and more of it. And then as you occupy more and more of it, you kind of get more claims to the land. Um, yeah. Like I think that a decent amount I'm trying to think historically if I have more examples. My history is so bad. But like a decent amount of claims on land can literally be like 
who lives there, right? So for instance, in India, one of the big issues going on to the north of India in that Kashmir region um, was Modi saying, hey, we're gonna change the laws so that Indians can start moving north and buying land in the Kashmir region. Um, and, and the point of that is that like, well, if we get more Indians moving in there, we get more Indians buying property there, you know, it kind of looks like ours. Like, are you gonna really move in? Are you really gonna move in and kick us out? Like, look how many Indians live there, right? Or same thing with the Xinjiang, Jin, Xinjiang, Xinjiang? province in um in china that big chunk of area to the northwest where all the uyghurs live well if china starts moving in ethnically han's chinese people into that region and then they start buying property there and they start living there like, okay well come on this is our land like look that's our people there right um I, yeah i think that's kind of like the idea um china xinjiang xinjiang sorry yeah similar with crimea and russia a lot of the people in crimea identify as russian a lot of russian people live in crimea like yeah true um yeah so i think that's kind of like the yeah Annexing territory by force is a violation of the UN Charter, so even if you recognize it, it doesn't mean anything. That's why the idea is that you do things in small steps to gain recognition slowly. Sure, but if the U.S. would recognize it, and if embassies would start to get there, right? I think the goal is, um, I think the goal is you want to put as many roadblocks up as possible towards moving this back. Like, imagine if Jerusalem was owned wholly by Israel, or or 80% or whatever, East Jerusalem can be some Palestinians. Imagine if all the embassies moved in there, and then imagine if a big conflict happened, like what's happening now. It'd probably be a lot easier for Israel to be like, okay, this is bullshit. We need to kick the rest of the Palestinians out. It's up too much like come on we're already the capital all the embassies are here it would be easier to just move them out right so like you take so you take these like steps to to increase your valid claim of the territory like time and time and time again you get more and more points that like move you in the direction of like sole ownership of it right oh it's pronounced crimea instead of crimea crimea sorry my bad the embassy of the united states of america in jerusalem is the diplomatic mission of the u.s of america to the state of Israel. Okay, so we do have an embassy there now. I believe we do, in Jerusalem. The embassy opened at its Jerusalem location on May 14th, 2018. It was relocated from its previous site in Tel Aviv by the Trump administration and is situated in what was previously the former U.S. consulate in the Arnona neighborhood. I wonder, and are there any other embassies in Jerusalem? Are there any embassies in Jerusalem? Jerus Jerusalem. Okay, there are currently 90 embassies in Israel, of which 87 are located in Tel Aviv, and three are located in Jerusalem. So the three in Jerusalem are the United States, Kosovo, and Guatemala. Interesting. And then 87 others are in... Tel Aviv and the Tel Aviv suburbs. Moving the embassy was just a loss of leverage for the U.S. over Israel. It seemed like the U.S. just gave Israel that for free, basically. Well, Israel is considered a huge strategic partner in the Middle East, so technically the U.S. wants to strengthen Israeli power there. The Kosovo one was probably in exchange for Israel recognizing their independence from Serbia. In the long term, wouldn't inaction by the larger nations favor Israel power? There is no, there is no such thing as inaction in the Middle East. Lefties and conservatives and libertarians like to pretend that the U.S. could just leave and then everything would be like they would figure it out. But if we leave, like, Palestine gets a lot of foreign support from other countries, especially Iran. Um, it's not like Palestine just does everything else. Hamas gets a lot of support from, uh, I'm pretty sure, even neighboring um, um, Hezbollah in... Hold on, somebody can... It's been a long time since I've like done Middle Eastern shit. But Hezbollah has a big presence in Lebanon... And I'm pretty sure they're supported pretty significantly by Iran, definitely by Syria. Um, and I think that's where a lot of Hamas gets their like firepower and stuff from um, in this region, right? Um, it's another thing too, right? It's, it's also similar here over in Yemen, where people criticize the U.S. and Saudi Arabia's involvement in the Yemen civil war. But the reality is, is that the Yemen civil war is half represented by Saudi interests, that ruled the previous kingdom there before it got like overthrown, I guess. Um, but Iran has a vested interest in the other side as well. Um, and obviously Iran would love to have a country loyal to them. South of Saudi Arabia bordering here would be very nice. Um, but yeah, this is, um, there's a lot of like interests that people have related to Israel and the Palestinians um, that are coming from, from foreign actors. <laughs> there's a lot of that, right? 
I think they meant not making a settlement by inaction. By that kind of inaction, yeah, Israel's getting the upper hand the longer the deal is not made. Well, no. I think that the longer the deal is not made, you're pro it, it really just depends on who lives where, right? So it sounds like, on the very little reading we've done, it sounds like what's happening is Palestinians are trying to build neighborhoods and trying to live in eastern Jerusalem because the more they can get living there and the more people they have there, the kind of the more legitimate claim they have to the land. And Jerusalem, Israeli, Israelis in Jerusalem are trying to say, like, okay, hold on. Well, if you want to build here, here's the permit. You've got to be able to do 52 backflips in order to have a house there. Otherwise, we're going to demolish, blah, blah, blah. And they're trying to put more and more roadblocks up so that they can kind of like mush, uh, move or gentrify or ethnically move like Palestinians out of East Jerusalem so that they can move more Israelis in is what it sounds like, right? They're fighting over like who can inhabit like Eastern Jerusalem, basically. So, pa pa right, because both sides have a vested interest in living there. Because if, Jeru if Israelis can kick all the Palestinians out of Jerusalem for a while, then they have like a really strong claim to the land. Like, okay, well, f you. Like, look, we're here. You're not. It's our, it's our city, right? Whereas the Palestinians are like, okay, well, hold on. Like, we live here. We've lived here for a long time. We want to continue to live here. And if we can, we want to push even further west, right? So there's just this vested territorial interest pushing against both sides. Uh, the March on Jerusalem Day, an annual event to mark the capture of East Jerusalem during the Arab-Israeli War in 1967, is seen by Palestinians as a provocation. Palestinians claim East Jerusalem is the capital of a future state. Israel annexed it after 1967, a claim most of the world does not recognize. Despite international calls to tamp down the crisis, the Israeli government did little to de-escalate the tensions until Sunday night, when the Israeli Supreme Court delayed a decision on the eviction of the Sheikh Jarrah families. The ruling had been expected on Monday. The Israeli police decided Monday to block Jews from entering the Aqsa compound, known to Jews as the Temple Mount, and to Muslims as the Noble Sanctuary and Holy to both religions. And minutes before the Jerusalem Day March was to begin on Monday afternoon, the government rerouted it on a less contentious path. Those measures came too late to contain the spiraling violence. The United States State Department condemned the Hamas attacks, calling them an unacceptable escalation. The department spokesman, Ned Price, called on all sides to de-escalate and avoid violence, but noted Israel's legitimate right to defend itself. Mr. Price also said the United States was deeply concerned about the violent confrontations in Jerusalem and praised Israel's efforts to reduce tensions there. But the Biden administration came under growing pressure on Monday from liberal activists and members of Congress to offer sharper criticism of Israel's government. J Street, a Washington-based liberal advocacy group, called on the Biden administration to make clear publicly that Israeli efforts to evict and displace Palestinian families in East Jerusalem and the West Bank are completely unacceptable. Asked about a charge on Sunday from Representative Ilhan Omar, Democrat of Minnesota, that Jerusalem's deputy mayor had endorsed ethnic cleansing, Mr. Price said, that's not something that our analysis supports. The rockets fired at Jerusalem constituted a pointed escalation. Militants in Gaza had fired rockets into Israel overnight Sunday after sending incendiary balloons into Israeli farmlands for the past several days, but the rockets had hit only open areas. Israel returned fire, barred fishermen from the territory from going to sea, and shut a key crossing between Gaza and Israel. The attack was a sharp departure from the usual rules. How many times has the word sharp been used in this article? Oh, okay, just try, sorry. It's a sharp departure from the usual rules of the conflict with Hamas, starting with an explicit threat last week issued by Muhammad Daif. Daif? 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 the commander-in-chief of the group's military ring, wing. Rarely seen or heard from, Mr. Deif. Is it just Deif? Or is it Deif? Just call him Dave? Where am I? You guys suck. Mr. Dave warned that Israel would pay a very heavy price for what he called the aggression against our people in Sheikh Jarrah. Hamas has created a new formula, said Michael Herzog, an Israel-based fellow with the Washington Institute for Near East Policy. They have created an equation where they try to deter Israel from taking actions in Jerusalem that they deem provocative, he said, and if Israel does not comply, they will fire. Besides the tensions in Jerusalem, the analysts said the internal Palestinian political rivalry was also fueling the current conflict, and in particular, the decision by President Mahmoud Abbas of the Palestinian Authority to postpone elections that had been scheduled for later this month. Hamas is trying to tell Abbas in one way or another, you are not the only person or party who calls the shots, said Mikhamir Abu Sada, a political scientist, science professor from Al-Akhsar University in Gaza. Israel has also inflamed the situation, according to Giora Island. These people should all just be named Dave or John, okay? A retired Israeli general and former national security advisor. We were not careful in Jerusalem, he said, citing the policy of encouraging Jewish settlement in the heart of Palestinian neighborhoods of East Jerusalem and the more tactical failures of handling the tensions in the city in recent days. At a very delicate time, toward the end of Ramadan, they gave Dief, 
and the militants in Gaza the motivation to do what they did, he said. The scenes of a pitched battle at one of the world's holiest sites were shocking to many. Why have the men attacking the Aqsa Mosque during Ramadan? Asked Khaled Zabarka, 48, a lawyer who said he had been praying at the mosque compound before escaping after the first shots were fired. The Aqsa Mosque is a sacred place for Muslims. Israel is starting a religious war. Israeli officials said the police were reluctant to enter the site and did so only as a last resort. We wanted today to pass as quietly as possible, said Mark Rejev, Rejev? Rejev? a senior advisor to Mr. Netanyahu. Unfortunately, Palestinian extremists had the opposite goal. Videos posted on Twitter showed scenes of chaos earlier in the day, both outside and inside the mosque, where some worshippers could be seen sheltering from explosions while others threw stones and set off fireworks. In another clip, police officers were seen striking a man being detained in part, by, uh, in part of the mosque compound. Early afternoon, the police had retreated from the site. Another video released by the police showed young men throwing stones from the perimeter of the mosque compound onto the land below. A separate clip taken by a surveillance camera appeared to show a Jewish man swerving into a Palestinian who had been throwing stones at his car. Palestinians pulled open the car doors before a policeman chased them away. The Hadassah Medical Center reported that a seven-month-old girl was treated after being slightly injured in the head by a rock. Scuffles also broke out in Sheikh Jarrah on Monday afternoon as a group of far-right lawmakers tried to mark Jerusalem Day by forcing their way into the street inhabited by the Palestinians listed for eviction. A group of leftist and Arab lawmakers blocked their path, setting off a brief scrum before at least one far-right lawmaker, Itamar ben Gvir, broke into the Arabs' lines. Why? Do, I don't understand what, what do they mean when they say like leftist or far-right or whatever here? It seems kind of like a weird dichotomy. I'm not sure what... But... Everything is, I'm guessing, like, far, like, I guess, broadly speaking, right is just more nationalist, Israeli supporting, whatever, and left is more Palestinian supported, I guess, but it's not sheik, it's pronounced sheikh. Oh, okay. A group of, uh, everything is connected. One of the Arab lawmakers, Aida Toma Sleeman, said of the days, uh, said of the days, many intertwining tensions. The various standoffs across Jerusalem reflected the struggle of a, of a people under occupation who want to liberate their land, houses, and souls, she said. Jesus, that's a lot of rockets. We can probably watch this, I guess, because there's nobody dying in this. Oh, these guys are, like, laughing about it, and then this... What are we watching? Um, in Israel, I guess they're so used to having rockets lobbed at them, they have something called an Iron Dome. Um, it's like the name for their missile defense system. I'm pretty sure help developed with help, massive help from the US. Basically, the idea is, is that if you see a rocket coming, you can fire another missile up next to it and you can detonate it next to the rocket so that it doesn't actually make it into Israel is the goal. There are a bunch of people like laughing around here that are like chilling. And then there's like a rocket that goes off like right next to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, time to leave. And then you have this guy that just doesn't give a fuck, alright? Mmm. There's no violence here, don't worry. Just a guy eating. This kind of shit is why Americans need to shut the fuck up about their opinions on Gaza. We will never have to like that. Yeah, so it's complicated because the problem is that structurally and bureaucratically, Israel has the upper hand. I don't think Palestinians can really do much. So violence is, violence is actually probably like the only option they have left is what it seems like. Um, and there might be solutions on the table that I'm not familiar with, but um, you know, I don't know. It's hard to see a lot of what I would deem, uh, ugh, it's hard to see a lot of what I would deem as misinformation and ignorance from people I generally otherwise respect in most areas. Well, if it makes you feel better, most people don't do any reading or any, have any understanding of anything. They just repeat whatever the talking lines are. After doing more reading, which side would you take on this? Um, I, I don't know what the right answer is. I don't, I don't know if there is a right answer for this. I, I truly do not know. Um, I mean, like, there's legitimate arguments that if Palestinians were given, like, equal say in some two-state solution, that, like, Jewish people's interests could be marginalized and f***ed. Um, 
But then it also seems shit to just say like, well, we're gonna kick out all the Palestinians now, like get fucked by. Um, I don't know, it's a, that's a rough one. Make Jews breed more? Unironically, um, Israel is one of the only countries that has like a birth rate that's like decently high. Compared to like every other Western country. Yeah, at 3.0, this is actually very high. I'm not sure why or how they do this or what the, well, if you ask alt writers, I can tell you. Every other birth rate, I'm pretty sure in every other Western country is below 1.9 or 1.8, which is like the, considered the sustain rate or whatever. Or is it 2.0? I thought it was like 1.9 or something for some reason. I don't remember why. The US is at 1.7. Hasidic Jews? Oh, maybe. Maybe, I don't know. Is it 2.1? Oh, okay. Do you think it's necessary, uh, do you think it's a necessity that Israel be a Jewish pseudo-ethno state? The argument is that if Israel doesn't explicitly prioritize to protect Jewish people, that the world could fall back into rampant anti-Semitism. No idea. Um, I... It's, that's a hard one. It's, in my opinion, most forms of, like, ethnic shit are cringe. But, like, if other people are being ethnic, then you, in some ways, you might be forced to. It's really complicated, right? Like, technically, in the U.S., it'd be cool if we could ignore everything about skin color. But that's pretty dumb to say when, like, some people are, like, still really big on skin color. Like, there needs to be some, like, corrective force there or some recognition there, you know? Um, so, I mean, I don't know. It's a hard one. How is Palestine being ethnic? Um, I don't, I don't know what the prevailing opinion is, but I know that there are certain Israeli groups um, that are loosely affiliated, at least with like Hamas or Hezbollah, um, that are like pretty anti-Jewish. Not even necessarily anti-Israel, but like anti-Jewish. Uh, I, I don't know how deep these ties run or how big or how actually true of their mission statements are, but like it's like I, I'm just not 100%. I, I couldn't tell you as much. But like, um, yeah. You said Israeli groups, you meant Palestine. Did I say Israeli groups? Sorry, I meant um, anti-Israeli groups, my bad. Is there even a defensible position on Israeli settlements in the West Bank? Um, I mean, Israeli settlements want to exist there, so Israel has more and more claims to the land. That's why they want to do it, right? Is they want to move, this is like how you do it, right? Is you move more and more people in, and then eventually like, look, like we live here, it's our land. I'm just saying, I'm explaining why else. I'm not justifying it. I'm not saying that like, this is good or whatever. I'm just explaining like the strategy. Why can't people separate descriptive claims from prescriptive claims? Because people just want to moralize every f statement that you make, because it's like all they're capable of thinking in terms of. Do you not have a particular stance regarding the general conflict? Is it too messy and complicated? Or do you just not care? Um, it's kind of a combination of all those things. Uh, like, I just, like, Israel and Palestine, it's not something that is generally that relevant all the time, so I don't do, like, a ton of research on it, so I don't have, like, a super strong opinion on it, because I just haven't. Um, also, I, like, I don't know, like, how close they are to moving towards anything. It just doesn't seem, like, there's, like, a lot of things, I think, that are worth my time in terms of, like, this might be what we're voting on or actually discussing, and I don't know if, like, Israel-Palestine is one of those things. Because the U.S., for whatever reason, seems to be unwilling to take a strong stance in regards to anything there. I don't know if they're just hoping that they'll figure it out themselves or, or what the what the thought process is. If you were the Israeli Prime Minister, what would you do? I don't know. Remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Mm. <laughs>